gonna shake your booties for black girl nerds. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate this very, very much. It's my pleasure. Thanks. This, I related to so many themes in this film from the large family to the Catholic guilt to the managing expectations of family. There was just, and that first when you leave the nest and the parents kind of want to check out where you're living and what you're doing. When you think of your own early experiences with big family gatherings, did you find any relatability between your own family gatherings and what the Blake family has happening this Thanksgiving? Well, I, I have a small family. I'm an only child. My father's an only child. My mother has one sister. So it was never, you know, huge family gatherings, but they were, they were, I always liked them. I always um, look forward to them. Uh, um, I got to see people I hadn't seen in a while. Um, both of my grandmothers were always there. Um, I have to say I, it was luck. I was lucky that there were not, uh, there was not a lot of tension or uh, uh, anxiety at our family meals, uh, Thanksgiving meals. But I understand it. I, I mean, I, I, I've been through a few, but um, I have to say I was very fortunate. What was particularly interesting to me about the chemistry of the cast is just the sheer amount of dialogue that you all have at any given time. And it just flowed beautifully like a like an honest true family from the commentary from the peanut gallery to what's happening it might be intense and the joking of it all when you're running through those type of scenarios with all of your co-stars does it take a moment to establish how all that conversation is happening and it's still being natural for us the viewer that's an incredible observation because that was one of the hardest things to do in this movie we had eight days of rehearsal and the way he writes uh, it's written that you overlap but you overlap at a certain sp specific time so an audience can almost hear both things uh and and it's it was really a lot it's hard it was really hard because we shot we shot one scene it was nine minutes long we just have that's the take uh the dinner scene was probably five or six minutes every time we shot that. Um, so it was very important to, uh, it's, you know, it sounds like people from Scranton, Pennsylvania talk, and yet it's art. It's beautiful the way Stephen constructed this piece. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was really hard. <laughs> that was really hard, yeah. That was the most enjoyable thing to me because I really felt like, an eavesdropper because I could hear all the things that were going on and they were all important to the continuity of what was Trump being conveyed. It was fantastic. I, I think that's what he wanted. You know, it's like, it's like you're watching someone, but you hear someone else. And uh, a lot of, I mean, movies, if you're watching you and somebody else speak, the camera goes over here, comes back mm -hmm. to you, goes over here, comes back to you. He, he didn't do It's It's like you were hiding in the other room. You could see one person. Maybe you can only see the back of somebody, but you could hear everything. And uh, it was like eavesdropping. That's, that's, yeah, that's exactly it. It was lovely. When you have a, a project like this, that's adapted from a stage play, it really is its own beast and it really is its own thing. Do you go and watch the original play to get an idea or does that distract you from your own performance and what you're trying to build? No, I would have, I, I'm always meant to see the play and I never got into New York to do it. And my agent was, she just kept saying, you've got to see this play, you've got to see this play. And I, I, I never got a chance to see it. I wish I had, but um, uh, I, I didn't. I will someday, somewhere. Same here. Now I want to see that yeah. version of it as well. Yeah. I, yeah. I thank you for your time. This is a, uh, your performance was marvelous. And thank you. I really, really enjoyed just the continuity between you all that really made it for me. Thank you again for your time. Thank you. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you talking to me today. Thanks for your time. Uh, the humans... I had I related to so many aspects of this from the the large family gathering to the small town to there's so many themes that I think a lot of us can relate to during the holiday season when you look reflect on your own family holidays 
did you have a feeling of dread? Did you have a feeling of anxiety? Like what was the, the underlying emotion that ultimately inspired you to create this? That's a good question, Giandra. I think it's, I think it was all the feels that you mentioned, joy, feeling of safety, also a feeling of elements of, of dread and feeling scared to go home. Um, I think for a long time, I was a gay kid who grew up in Scranton. And so I think my relationship and forming my own identity and still feeling so connected and so much love from my, you know, from my family unit in my hometown and figuring out what that relationship is. So I think in some ways, I think the story hopefully contains uh, the elements of sadness and humor and literal jump scares um, are kind of the, the sort of stew that I have experienced um, and sometimes do experience when I, um, yeah, when I sort of return home or, or what a family holiday means in its entirety, um, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always curious to hear from other people because it is such a check-in moment too. It's like multi-generations coming together, great food, hopefully, um, but also that, um, you know, like what do you carry back year to year? It just varies based on the outside world, what's going on in your life, um, who might be sick, whose health is failing, who needs more help, who needs less help. So I think it's just a roller coaster that maybe um, the Blakes might not necessarily, uh, everyone might not see themselves in the Blakes, but that roller coaster of what one encounters with a large family is probably, um, well, I hope relatable to, uh, to some people. Mm -hmm. What really stood out to me is managing family expectations without them expressing what their own kind of demons and things are occurring, but they still have this iron, this is what we think it should be for you. Is that, is that fair to say there's a, some challenges with the family's balancing of expectations for the children? Yeah. And of course, it's like so complex. Where does that, you know, where does that come from? And, and I love that the older daughter, Amy's character, is sort of better at seeing her parents as real people, complex people who have had their own journeys and maybe whose stubbornness and being set in those ways and how things should be. Just having maybe a, a calmer relationship to it, even if she doesn't always agree with them. Whereas Beanie, sort of the classic, I'm 25 and I haven't yet discovered um, that I maybe am a lot like my mother. So, in, so instead she just sort of like, she's constantly butting heads with her, you know, uh, but because she actually is turning into her mother in many ways. Um, but yeah, I grew up in a Maronite Christian, sort of the Lebanese version of Roman Catholicism. Um, and so the, the whole like immigrant side on my da dad's family is like, it's not just that things should be a certain way, but in a very loving way, it was like um, there was a real necessity uh, for my dad was one of 10 kids um, to sort of uh, almost like as a, they viewed it as a, um, like a survival mechanism. Like this is, this is how you stay together. This is how we survive economically. This is how we, um, so I definitely relate to what it is to have just like abundant love from family members who also very much want your life to go a specific way or, or for, for you to maybe even be a certain way, but with the intentions of um, protecting you or wanting the best for you, even when it maybe puts you at odds uh, with your own interests. And then of course, the, the dance around that, how do families reconcile those expectations versus, and I find the way families reconcile that um, funny, sad, sometimes everything and everything in between. And um, I guess putting some of that uh, in front of people because it's not their family, I'm hoping it lets people maybe reflect on uh, whatever their own really specific dynamics are in their own, um, in their own family units. Mm -hmm. 
I saw so much, I have to wrap it up, but I have a very large Catholic Creole family from Louisiana and there's a lot of the same dynamics. I found a lot of relatability to that. Well, I need to buy you a beer because I want to hear about those. I want to hear how you're coping with. <laughs> Woo, child, Thanksgiving is next week. Thank you so much for your time. We should connect some time to talk about it. Thank you. I would actually really like that. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you for so taking much. the time. My Take pleasure. Care. Shake your booties for black girl nerds.